added as plot two uh, is, is currently zoned U1, uh, which um, based on what I found in other project areas, I think it was zoned M1 because there's a sanitary sewer, or I mean U1 because there was a sanitary sewer easement there. Um, I discovered that on, when we were redoing the zoning map before on uh, some other properties where if there was an easement area that they would just rezone that whole property U1, which in effect makes it that whole property where you really can't use it. So um, obviously the properties to the, the west, the west and the south are already zoned M1. Uh, this and it, the property's been used as M1 in terms of a contractor storage yard. There was not an actual building there, uh, but they've been using it as part of uh, Polk County Heating and Cooling. They stored materials and uh, equipment and that kind of thing there. So it, it was incorporated as part of their site. So uh, this brings it in compliance with the area in general, uh, as well as past use of the property. Also is in conformance with the future land use plan, which shows the area as industrial. Um, and in addition, uh, the property owner was able to get 100% of the adjacent property uh, to uh, consent to the rezoning. So from that standpoint, we are recommending um, approval of the rezoning. Kind of in a related issue, as I was looking at the la future land use plan, I noticed that there was a, uh, some of the areas that are right along Broadway um, that appeared to be that I, I talked to our GS person, that apparently they somehow mistakenly incorporated in this one section the existing land use instead of proposed. So I, just some kind of a glitch that happened, I guess. Um, so my suggestion there, even in this would be an action item under item number seven, uh, since it's not necessary for the RTM project, uh, would be to amend that uh, future land use plan similar to what that the drawing is um, down at the bottom of that memo, which would make the overall um, Polk County heating and cooling property and that area that was, we were just talking about rezoning, as well as the two mini storage, all a light industrial, um, and then commercial all along the, the uh, East Broadway strip, and then going up the, the street facing section of uh, north third there. So in other words, where the subway is and cutting edge, that kind of thing would be all commercial. So, which is really what we had talked about, and it was that way on an earlier version. I'm not sure. I think it was more just a, a, a cat error, I, I, that somehow that that the, the future land use that we had on earlier versions that we discussed in our meetings somehow got lost and it showed up ex as existing. So. But anyway, so as far as that goes, um, we're recommending approval of the rezoning from U1 to M1 um, for that area that will be known as Lot 2 of RTM Plat 1. Kathleen, just for clarification, huh? um, on this application, you said 100%, I see 71.37. Oh, well, maybe I'm remembering wrong. I apologize. Do I speak? Sorry. Nope, 71.4. I apologize. Oh, I, I was remembering wrong. 71.4%. last month was 100%. Um, so I didn't know if you want to take a motion on that or else we can go through the, the rest of it. It's fine too. Um, the next item that's related to that is the preliminary plat and final plat. Um, we would recommend that these don't go to council until after the rezoning is complete because they're showing setbacks related to, you know, that are related to the as if the zoning is in place. Um, but uh, really they're just dividing, a, making this a two-lot subdivision. Uh, right now, if you look at the county's website, it's a bunch of different parcels and, and it just consolidates all of what Polk County would continue to own as lot one and then lot two could be sold um, to someone else for future development. Uh, there's a potential it could be com combined with um, the clean air duct uh, development, uh, but it also would allow, it's set up with ingress, egress easements so that it would allow um, anybody else, you know, anybody to, to buy that property and develop it uh, within the M1 zone district codes. Um, there's a lot of easements that are associated with them. Some of the buffer, some of them are buffer easements that are required by code, but because the property's never been platted, 
in any recent history, <coughs> buffer easements are not in place. Um, and um, there's and some of it is a sanitary sewer easement that the sanitary sewer runs through there, but for some reason the easement document never got recorded. We found where it had been approved, but it, it didn't get recorded, so we're kind of taking cleaning that up. Um, the overland flowage easement, we're adjusting it a little bit to, to match with the as-built location of a storm sewer. Um, getting the 35-foot core of engineer's easement, buffer easement that's required by code now. And uh, also documenting an overland flow or drainage easement across the, or overland flowage easement, I should say, across the south side of the property where there's an existing ditch that's already there, but again, it uh, kind of <laughs> defines that. So really a lot of it is just picking up easements and then dividing into two, two subdivisions, or two lots. So in terms of our staff's recommendation there, the recommendation on the, for the preliminary plat is to approve, is uh, council prior approval of the rezoning from U1 to M1 before they act on the preliminary plat, uh, that they address all of the preliminary plat comments, which they have done. There were three comments in the letter, but they have taken care of those. Um, and then payment of, of all fees. And our recommendation in terms of the final plat is again, council approval of the rezoning prior to the final plat going to council. Uh, so that would be after the third reading. And that all legal documents need to be reviewed by the city attorney prior to the city council approval of the final plat. And that the, all the documents, the final plat documents, the, the, all of the platting documents, legal doc, uh, easement documents, and a petition waiver for a sidewalk would be recorded prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy for any site plan improvements on lot one. That way we should have some insurance that that actually follows through. And again, payment of all fees. And last but not least is a site plan. Um, I don't know if, yeah, you guys want to present the site plan? I'd probably say you're doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I was in a fast mode from the, <laughs> from the work session, so. Uh, this is a site plan for lot two only. Uh, so this site plan could actually go straight to council because it is on a property that is already zoned M1, has appropriate zoning in place, but again, we would have that same recommendation at the final plat before they get the certificate of occupancy. So the agenda uh, says it's for lot one, is it lot two? It is, the, 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 no, it's lot one. Yes, lot one. Did I, did I just say lot two? I apologize. No, no, it's for lot one. Okay. Sorry. Do you want to take that up? Is that better for you? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Our, plan, our plan is? Okay, I'm Mark Young. I'm one of the owners of Book County Heating and the Department of RTM. Um, our idea is to take, um, first, some outdoor storage on that north part of the lot one, which will be uh, fenced. Um, it will have the white slats in it so you can't see through it. And then our goal eventually is on the other side of our driveway is we would actually put up two more buildings for outdoor storage. Or not outdoor, indoor storage for like motorhomes. So our goal is to have two buildings down there that will be lots. And then we have our existing building which we have Book County Heating in. So. Oh, yeah, the existing building that's there on the south side, we'll actually tear that down. Relocate that hydrant and then just square all that up and put two buildings up there eventually. Uh, in in the uh, report here, it said there's one building that doesn't fit that's going to be torn down. Yeah, that's the south the south building we yeah, just talked about. This one four by one oh eight. Okay. It actually, and the reason it doesn't, um, oddly enough, or I don't know if it's odd, but um, we did the the south. Uh, let me up here. This section of the property right here is is zone C1. So the building's being used for industrial use, and it actually overlaps into the C1 zoning district. Is the reason why we had talked to him about possibly even rezoning it to M1. He didn't feel that was necessary with the way he was going to develop the property, whenever that building. So it's exactly, right now it's an existing non-conforming use. But if it ever should burn down, they would have to build it back 
so that it sat entirely in, the, in one district, assuming it was going to be used for industrial purposes, which is Mark's intention. So that, that, was, that was what the comment was, of why it was there, just because it is a little bit of an anomaly. But we have found other locations where, in the old ordinance, uh, there was no buffer requirement, so they would stop rezoning short of the property line and kind of address buffers that way as opposed to rezoning it and requiring a buffer. So my assumption there is that was kind of intended to be a buffer and why it was left. I, but I don't know that for a fact. I know that they've done that in other locations. But. So that's more just, a, I guess, a comment more than anything that they need to address at this point in time because it is it is existing nonconforming, so they can certainly continue to use it until they decide to do something different. Okay. Uh, they did address most of the review comments that we had. Uh, there's still um, just a couple cleanup items where we've asked them to relocate the four-foot sidewalk so it's one foot from the property line. They did fix that on the preliminary plan. It just didn't get carried over to the site plan, so we've asked them to take care of that. Um, we provided a few comments on the stormwater management plan uh, just this afternoon to, to uh, Brian, so he's got those. Those will need to be addressed. Um, I had a comment in there saying the, uh, the multi-tenant sign, but that's actually is shown. They are showing a general location for a multi-tenant sign. They don't have the detail for it at this point in time. Obviously, when they come forward with a sign permit, they'll have to meet code in terms of that sign. Um, but it, they are proposing it as a multi-tenant sign, so it would serve both Polk County Heating and Cooling and their storage, Polk, Polk City storage, or whatever you want to call the business. So. Um, and that allows them a little bit more square footage because they, they're putting all the businesses on one sign instead of having multiple signs. Um, and then I'd ask them to add a note saying that an additional buffer may be required with a future site plan along this, I'll call it, I'm back here, along this south property line. Right now there's a lot of trees on that adjacent property. On the, it, so there's not a need to, to plant more trees at this point in time. But when they go to put a building in here, we'll need to look at that a little more closely to see if they need to add some landscaping on their side of the buffer. So that's all I had. I guess I could add a few comments. Brian Campbell, Campbell mm -hmm. Engineering and Surveying, 301 Northeast Trotting Drive, Ankeny. Yeah, so and then there is an existing berm here uh, along North 2nd Street right now, and then we're going to propose, we're proposing uh, a lot of uh, evergreen and, and uh, shade trees and shrubs to go on top of that berm to add some additional screening. And then there'll be a, a small detention area here, kind of up in this northeasterly corner to accommodate any extra runoff uh, for the development of that gravel area in there inside the fence. And like Kathleen said, we kind of fixed some of the easement problems and issues and, uh, that the area had. Uh, we cleaned up some of the, uh, uh, of course, you know, the core is still sensitive to anything that goes on next to them. So uh, we, a couple places here between these two buildings on the east side, we're going to add some erosion stone because there's a little bit of erosion there. So we're going to put five cubic yards of erosion stone to make sure that that doesn't become any more of a problem. And then on that north side of the newer building, too, we're going to put a little bit of, uh, make sure those all have splash blocks on those downspouts and, and put a little bit of erosion stone on those uh, on those two easterly ones. The other ones have seemed just fine. It's just there is a little bit of erosion showing there, so we're going to make sure that doesn't get a problem. So uh, a little bit of erosion stone at the end of those splash blocks. I guess the other thing I think of is that they are not proposing any lighting. It's not going to be able to, uh, there's no outdoor lighting. Of the outdoor lighting of the uh, There will be when the sign, I think you will have a light for the sign. That, of course, that would be part of the sign. Program. Yeah. We're actually, the sign will probably go up when that first building goes in, and then we'll propose some lighting on that building that will shine onto the outdoor storage. So that will probably be in the spring if we can get enough storage in that first phase. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, is it okay by ordinance that the outdoor storage is gravel? It, it is if it's fenced and screened. I'm going to have to let me look at this and see how that's worded. Sorry. Six foot high. Yes. That's what they're proposing. Six foot high. 
high fence. Um, outdoor storage of materials or equipment is not permitted in the M1 or M2 zoning districts except and specifically approved by council on a site plan. Said storage shall be limited to areas designated on the site plan and shall be maintained and screened in conformance to the site plan. So it's got a site plan triggers that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have sections in your ordinance that require parking lots to be paved. So. I mean, where it's requ the required parking stalls as opposed to that, the outdoor storage. And where's the fence going again? I'm sorry, I was confused. It's on the north side of the drive that comes into the property thing. You can, on the site one, you can see where to draw like a pickup and a mm -hmm. trailer just right uh, turn radius through the gate. Oh, I yeah. There's a, it's a rectangular area as, as the driveway, there's a paved driveway that goes to the site now. So it's up there north of the drive and the same way. Oh, here it is. Here. Just east of the barn and front burn. Oh, it's different. Where is it? Right, right here. Here's the, sorry, it's this portion of it. Right. Of making it higher? Um, if you, that ground's already lower, oh, so okay. there's already a, like a five foot high berm. Okay. So when you actually drive into the property, it drops down probably five or six feet. Mm -hmm. So it's already kind of like the bottom ground. So. Mm -hmm. I guess my only question is is this parking or is it storage? It's outdoor storage. It's outdoor. I guess my interpretation with parking is that it's not a required parking for a specific use. It's not so it's not a parking lot per se. I guess that's you just define what they're doing. I, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm considering it. I, I guess I call it storage because they're warehousing it. It's not like it's coming and going. I, I guess that's a. <clears throat>
first item we need to consider is consider a motion to recommend rezoning from U1 to M1. Okay, I'll second that. Second. Okay. I would make a motion that we recommend the council uh, approval of the rezoning for the property at 207 North 2nd Street, uh, owned by RPM Properties LLC, approximately the size of one half acre uh, from U1 to M1 zoning, subject to completion uh, and a resolution of review comments and completion of review recommendations of the city engineer dated September 7, 2016. Second. Socks? Yes. Sires? Yes. Hill? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplett? Yes. I have a question on B and C. The uh, review comments are combined. Does, uh, does the motion need to be separate or can the motion be combined? Uh, which, I apologize, Ron. Uh, for plan. the preliminary and final plan. Yeah, I mean, we need a separate motion for each, for okay. the preliminary okay. and the okay. final. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, I also will make a motion uh, that we recommend to council approval of the preliminary plat uh, for the RTM uh, plat one uh, owner RTM properties uh, subject to resolution of engineers uh, comments and completion of recommendations uh, dated September 15, 2016. <coughs> Next. Hill? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplett? Yes. Bower Sox? Yes. Sires? Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, that we recommend the council approval of the final plat of the uh, RTM plat one. Uh, owner RTM Properties LLC, subject to uh, uh, resolution of engineer comments and completion of recommendations dated September 15, 2016. Second. <laughs> Tie. Hill? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplett? Yes. Bower Sox? Yes. Sires? Yes. I make a motion that we recommend to council approval of the site plan uh, for Polk City Storage uh, for only lot one of RPM Plat One, uh, subject to resolution of engineers' uh, comments and completion of recommendations dated September 15, 2016. All second. Dietz? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplett? Yes. Bower Sox? Yes. Sires? Yes. Till? Yes. I do have a question before we move on to the next item, if I may. Yes. Uh, in, the, in the rezoning, uh, one of the things that recommendations approval are known to the future land use plan. So that's coming separate, right? Yeah, that's a separate. Okay, all right. Yep. M7. Yep. Thank you. Item number seven, consider motion to recommend an amendment to the future plan. Use plan. There you go. Yep. Yeah. I, this is, a, and I apologize, I probably should have had it as a separate memo. I discovered it with when I was doing this one, so I kind of rolled it into one. I was going to take the time to divide it into two memos, and I just didn't get that far, so. But we did have it separated out because, again, it was not required for the last project. So item number seven is considering a motion to, to amend the land use plan, uh, as you see in the, the colored aerial, which matches what it was shown on an earlier version of the map. And I'm not sure how that happened. But. Now, commercial, I got a question. Uh, 
Central is our town square in our plan. I don't know. Yeah. Is it separately? I, I think it's still, it's not separately distinguished. Okay. I don't believe it's it. Yeah, right it is in your zoning, but not in your future. Okay. Land use. I don't, it's right behind you, Ron. So you can probably see I mean, Ron uh, Dennis. Yeah. So you can probably actually sit there. I can't remember. Well, it, our town square is green. Yeah, oh, that'd be the. Yeah. It is. yeah. Yeah, it's commercial. Okay. All right. Yeah. The actual square itself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a commercial. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just want to make sure we have some separate thing for our square. Yeah. This is the way it would be shown that way. But we, yeah, we've got okay. the CTS zoning district kind of addresses that. And the only the other thing that I didn't color, but you may want to consider, is uh, the Presnell land. Um, is designated for, again, that came out because of the existing land use. Uh, the Presnell ground, you, you can kind of see it up at the very corner here. It's right next to the Clean Air Duck building. It runs on um, North 3rd. It is shown this, as future land use of residential. Uh, it, however, zoned um, commercial. I, believe it's, I think it's commercial. It's zoned M1. Um, and on an earlier version, again, it was shown as industrial as well. So then, and I didn't, I, I was kind of looking down here, and I didn't catch that until after I had printed this. So um, I didn't change that. But you may want to include in, uh, adjusting the Presnell to industrial to match the zoning or maybe commercial, you know, whatever you see fit there. Um, an earlier version of the plan did show it as industrial. So if you just want to make it clear for pre-recommendation if we're including any change to the personnel property as well as the others that I've indicated. And you don't have to follow that. I, it is it's residential because it's currently I residential. I understand that, but I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's up to you if you want to include that as well. That's kind of where I believe the Easter's homes are. It's Scott Easter's house, and there's another. <coughs> there's two homes there that are just north of the water treatment plant. Is what Dennis is referring to. Those were always shown. I'm pretty darn sure were always shown as residential. We had. We did not follow the zoning on that one. Again, you, you don't have to follow zoning. It's, it's what what do you see that? How do you see that area, and what do you think it should be? I, I guess I I don't see it. I guess I, I'd just soon just go ahead and just do this M1 because that's the one that's in play right now and not bother with the personnel and those other properties. On there. Well, that just, again, because uh, Yeah, I don't even know if they had enough to you know, talk to him or not. I can't tell you if he 
didn't want to sign it or if he was even approached, they may have got, once they got those, the 50 percent, they may have not, they may have quit talking to people too. That's a possibility. Not hearing how they ask. Yeah, the reason I was suggesting that commercial is because if you look at that commercial on the existing land use plan now, it's, it's pretty haphazard. You've got, you know, a residential kind of stuck in the middle. It, it, it's just pretty haphazard at this point. And so is the Presnell's, uh, was that depicted earlier as light industrial or as commercial? It, it, was, it was light industrial light before. Industrial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had, before the, the light industrial wrapped around, included all of the, um, well, what, we, what was just the, the RTM plat, I'll call it, with both lots one and two and the, and, the, and the Presnell piece, as well as, if you look on the inside, where it's shown as light blue, where those, where those mini storages are, that was also industrial. So, I mean, again, I... It, it, it wound up going to, because now it's shown basically as vacant, which is where, what it was at that time, because that was that third uh, where, mini warehouse building that didn't, that's where that came from. And then you kind of don't have, I mean, there's the Bob Miller piece that's to this, that's kind of back behind the bank that we had always had shown that that could be developed as commercial. Or, and, or would be appropriate land use uh, as commercial, um, and that there's a there's an existing house that's just southwest. It's, it's right here, I believe it's Neil Miller's house, if I think, if I remember yes. right. Yes. And, um, that that was uh, designated so that that could be developed as commercial, redeveloped as commercial. I mean, it, again, it doesn't mean that he has to move out. It doesn't change sure. the fact that it's residential now, uh, but to have the residential. In my own opinion, the, having the residential squeeze between commercial and industrial doesn't make a lot of sense from a future land use standpoint. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm wondering if it's almost best well, to do what it Well, what I'm thinking is, this is, I mean, this is just doing an add-on right here without any, right now it's, it's proposal is just to do lot L1, right? That's their proposal. Yeah. yeah, this was this was my suggestion as a cleanup because I, I could see okay, that, but that the, do, don't we have to have that as part of our notice on the agenda? Should well, yeah, we, we would have to then go through and this would this back. would not this would be a separate thing. I just want to get your direction on it. We would come okay. back, have a public notice. Right. Okay. This is not the final final. It's just more. Do you want us to go that direction okay. and clean right. that up? Right. Because, okay. in my, based on what I've seen. This, there was a drafting error made here, and I'd like to get that corrected. Sure. Well, we should probably get that updated, but we should do it so people know what's going on. Right, right. And, we'll, and I'll have, same as I've done here normally, I'll have here's the boundary of the area, and, and we'll have more. Okay. And there'll be a separate public hearing at, at council, but it just, it would just, and we will, I'm going to go through and just look and make sure that we've caught all of those discrepancies based on the last two plans. So, do you not want to... That's yeah, more of a direction, I guess. Have you come back? Yeah, I think it's just the direction. Just give us the direction to come I back. I would that recommend that we do it all at once and do it the way it should have been maybe in the first place. Mm -hmm. and at least get the, you know, had I suffered. And, and yeah. I don't really want to do anything tonight then. No, no, that's fine. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Any other? No, I yeah, yeah. I, I concur. Yeah. So you don't even have to vote on that just more. That's the direction we'll bring that back as a more, as a standalone thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, item number eight, the stop at Broadway. Motion, consider a motion to recommend approval of the site plan.
you, I'm sure, are familiar with the building that's <coughs> immediately two, two, Can you two down. Can you state your name and address? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Andrew Lorenzen, uh, Walker Cohen Lorenzen Architects, uh, 3706 Ingersoll in Des Moines. So we, we've been working uh, with Senders Construction and, and uh, <laughs> considering the redevelopment of that property and demolished <laughs> building several months ago. And uh, are keeping the metal building that's there, but doing a full remodel to the inside, new new infrastructure, new services, new utilities to the building. And then where the block building was will be a patio with a, a small um, a small addition to the existing building, whose use is uh, will will be storage for the future tenants. Uh, part of the feet, the, the architectural design to to kind of dress up the existing building along the this east side, there will be a 20-foot wall, 20-foot high wall, that kind of L-shaped wall that wraps the gable end, the cutoff end that's visible now. That will be clad in a, in a metal panel, a centria panel, it's an architectural metal panel, 12 feet in depth with some texture, with some, uh, and, and that will be a dark gray color. Um, actually, that will, that will be the lighter gray which is called Mindful Gray. It's a Sherwin-Williams color. The colors are open for negotiation. The, the existing metal cladding on the rest of the building that's there now is in good condition, but uh, will be repainted uh, the unfortunately <coughs> named Sensuous Gray. <laughs> so I, I've had to say that name of a paint on the, on the record now, which is <laughs> sure interesting. <laughs> um, and then the, the, uh, the, the small addition will be painted a dark navy color called Dark Knight, which is it's this, it's kind of a dark navy. Um, the patio design will be a concrete patio with uh, a decorative gravel border um, that the developer has proposed using for container garden seasonally. Um, that outdoor area will have some decorative bollard lighting and the existing soffit and the new overhang on the building will, will have um, soffit lighting to illuminate kind of the, their area outside the building. Uh, the last material on it is kind of an overhang, overhanging canopy that wraps the north and the east side and that'll be a, a material called Trex which is commonly used as, as a decking material. It's a composite wood product but it's, it's also, it also can be used as a cladding. And um, we're proposing a blend of colors, so kind of a, a random blend of some dark and light gray on it. Um, Kathleen had asked for a sample. We weren't able to provide that today, but I'm happy to bring that uh, maybe for the council meeting or, or an, another opportunity if you'd like. This gentleman doesn't have to keep holding that up. <laughs> we just have it in front of us. <laughs> we know that's the part. <laughs> Thank you. Such a good job. So, um, I suppose I, there, there are several items that, that we need to address in the review. Uh, at this point, I think a lot of them are, are questions or clarifications. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they um, have addressed uh, the bulk of the comments that we had um, since the packets went out. Um, I guess the first comment was uh, I hadn't, I didn't, at least didn't notice the call out in terms of what the material was between the sidewalk and the curb there along 3rd Street, where the sidewalk isn't paved out the curb. I don't know what the, I thought maybe it looked, it looked like a fairly narrow strip there, and I didn't know if it was going to be, it's not too small of a strip to be grass. I didn't know what you were thinking on that. Uh, Vic Hedge, do with Associate Engineering Company, wow, P.O. Box 13075 in Des Moines, 50310. Um, kind of about suggestions, I haven't really talked to the clients on that one yet, because I just got the comments. Because uh -huh. it's a transition from a non compliant ADH, so we have to extend that grass strip to the north that's there now. I'm not sure what the building right south of this is, but. Mm. Um, so it's kind of steep through there. So right. we don't, I don't know if grass would be good to grow there or if you want to put brick, i got to talk to them and maybe get some suggestions. Um, the engineer, yeah, you, I, you. Yeah, I, I just didn't know I don't know if grass would be good there, to be truthful. Pardon? I don't know if landscaping it would be good because it's probably a 
four to one slope. Yeah, you know, the sidewalk to the street. I think that's what it is now by the. the yeah, and I, the only thing there is if it was that steep, I would be concerned about like river rock or something because I don't know exactly. if, it would, if it would stay. So. So um, I don't know if it's like pavers or something. Yeah, slope if it was a paver, you may want to do something colored so that it, it's distinct, so people don't because it is steep. And so again, it's. Yeah, it's a different. It's a unique it, situation. Yeah. Just because of existing buildings and existing roads. Hard transition. So, uh, anyway, so we need to get that worked out um, before it goes to council. Um, I just had a question on there's a that the retaining wall that's along South Third uh, Street, you know, it varies in height, and then it, when it wraps the corner, you no longer have the posts, and it's like a short wall. I just didn't know if that would be a problem from a as people are parking their bikes, if they don't realize it's there, if they're backing into it, I, I you know, it's falling over. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not up on building codes, so I didn't well, know if that's because, an issue. Because there's, we're not protecting against a head knocker. Right. And there's also no real change in grade to uh, sort of defend against. I think we're okay at the height that you're at, although, I mean, I think it's a good comment. We're, we're just trying to, it, the, the existing grade does kind of wrap around, so we've got to pick that up somehow mm -hmm. without warping Try not to warp it back in. So I, I think it's a good comment, and I don't think we have it fully cooked yet. But okay. we'll come up with a solution that you know complies with the building code. And yeah, yeah, that, and that's the main thing there. That's obviously that'll be reviewed at the building permit stage too. So, um, and the the other issue or quite comment we had was just that the they do have a the the patio has a bit of a depression in it, and as I recall, unless someone's changed. I changed the grade to where it drains all the street across the sidewalk. Okay, okay, because that so was. The sidewalk's at 1%. Okay. It has to be tore out, and then it goes at a half or three quarters percent all the way across the patio. And then it slopes like a 1 to uh, okay. 2 percent from the building to that. So as a central V that runs across the mantle. So if the sewer backs up, it'll flow over the sidewalk and across the curb out in the street. Okay, that was my main concern because. You know, those are older storm sewers and that kind of thing. And I thought, if there wasn't capacity in that, I hate to have a patio, a pond in the middle of your patio. I don't think you probably want that. So, okay, so that was a, okay. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I just made the comment that there weren't any plant materials, but you've indicated because there's no plantings at all that are proposed with the site plan, but they indicated they're considering container plantings. Um, and then just bu the building sign, we need to get some dimensions to make sure that, that the two signs on the, on the Broadway side add up together and they, all, they don't exceed code. Um, and then just on the cut sheets, just some circles that tell me which fixture, that kind of thing. So that was really all I had in terms of comments. So I think we'll easily be able to get those addressed before <laughs> this goes to council. My understanding is you're looking to go to council next Monday night. So right. by Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday noon, I guess at the latest. Well, um, first of all, I commend all of you for doing this. This is really nice, really good. And I think that what the architect and architects here have done is um, really nice. Um, it isn't uh, brick, which is in our ordinance, which is, but we have uh, alternates, right? Mm -hmm. That we can do that. There's one of them here that we probably never looked at before, which I think is fine. That's the Trex cladding. Uh, I think that really adds a lot to it. You know, that's something that's new that you know, the council's probably never seen, at least out here anymore. Um, I have a couple concerns. Um, I'm looking at the north elevation, which is along West Broadway, and I see the existing metal building, which you painted, yeah, uh, where the big windows are. Um, is the color there a, a good represent or a close representation? Did you bring any samples with you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I brought I brought the samples that I have. Um, they're, they're just a little out of the fan deck samples. Okay. Um, and this is the metal building, right? Yeah, that's okay. the darker of the two bricks. And then this one, it's the lighter, which is which would be the new 
the new screen wall, the big, the tall wall. This, this color here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. So that's. I mean. So it's probably. I don't know that we've necessarily settled. Yeah. Please. Please. So I don't know that we've settled on the exact colors, but it's a darker and lighter, warm gray is what we want to get to. Okay. And then, are you going to paint um, all s yes. exposed sides of the metal building, so the west yes. side and even on the south the side? The back side, too. Okay. All of it will be consistent. <clears throat> okay. I forgot to look at the roof. What, what color is the roof? What color is it? I think it's got kind of a tan or a white off-white color now, and, and so we don't have any plans to repaint that. I don't. I, I worry about the long-term durability on that, it, but I think it'd be cleaned. It'd and, peel off. Um, okay. Uh, I think that you should present those colors as best you can to mm -hmm. the council, um, and I think they're fine. What you're doing. Um, the other concern is that this is kind of a kind of the main intersection, and obviously it's been. To me, an eyesore for a long, long time. So again, I commend you for tearing that down with all the. I, I assume you took care of the asbestos before you tore it down. <laughs> so this is all over yes. Post City. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've been breathing a little hard lately, so I've been wondering. So. Um, and because it's such a, I mean, we're really trying to improve our town square and everything. And, and, and you've taken a, a ninety percent leap here with this building. The 10 percent that I'm concerned about is that on where the parking lot is on the west side, uh, that <clears throat> you really haven't carried the the architecture around there. But on the south side, where you have that new addition, you carried all those metal panels in between the existing building, which probably is not going to ever show at all, except maybe just when you turn the corner five, six, ten feet at the most. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you would consider taking those metal panels or something similar to that that's that's on, and I'm talking about this, this elevation here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm wondering if you'd consider taking most of that metal <laughs> panel that's never going to show and actually putting the fiber cement uh, panels up there and painting them. Uh, and carrying some of that back around to the west elevation, um, which you've started to do here a little bit at the bottom. Well, actually on the bottom there with that hatch, that's the existing concrete exposed mm -hmm. footing. Yeah. So that's that's what that's what you're seeing there. Yeah, I understand that. I'm talking about Taking yeah. the panels from the other yes. side and maybe bringing them across from the south side to the all the way side. all the way across the top of those windows, so that we have something that kind of ties yeah. your architecture on three sides together instead of just the two sides, and it's it's pretty prominent when you come down, and I'd hate to waste the opportunity now. I'm I'm not really asking you to do that. I'm asking you to consider doing that because you're the architects and yes, and your owner needs to. I'm not asking you to even spend any more money, I don't think. Maybe, maybe a little, but... David, yeah. I don't know if investors. I work with these guys and represent the project. I, I think your concern is if you're coming down the street from Broadway, you see the backside, and it'll have a different architectural look, perhaps, than the other sides that we've designed. So that's that's something that we can consider. I don't know that we've put that in any cost models yet, but... Uh, I guess I hear your concern. So you, you want to make sure that the project from all of its visible sides has the same sort of look and feel. I think we can find a way to incorporate. Maybe because the, the, the one material that does currently wrap in the design is the Trex cladding, the wood cladding. That wraps all the way around and kind of that our, that was our was our attempt at trying to integrate some of the design features around the building, around the most of the three prominent sides. So maybe maybe there's a way for us to Revise that to kind of make it do a little bit more of that, without you know using that material and some of the other design things. Pull it down farther and maybe. Yeah. I, I think that we can study that. Well, I I would appreciate that. I think yep. the city would appreciate that, and I recommend in the, that when you get to city council that that be an important issue before you pass it. Um, 
but I don't really want it. I mean, you spend a lot of money here. This is really nice building. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm trying to find a way where you take the, I don't think the metal panels that you've got, uh, spending all that cost on the metal panels on the south elevation is worth it. And, and, well, and, and that could be, that could be the, that could be the compromise. We might take a look at what we've got on the south side and perhaps redo that a little bit so we put a little more into the west yeah. side to address your concern, a little less on the south side where mm -hmm. it's probably not as visible. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not concerned with that south elevation at all, except maybe just turning the corner like you'd like to do, which mm -hmm. is good. Um, so, you know, I, from our standpoint, we can only recommend things, I, but I, I appreciate your willingness to take a look at it. Appreciate your comment. Thank you. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Just uh, another a little kudos. Appreciate including a bicycle rack in the design. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone in the audience? City Council the uh, site plan, which includes the elevations um, of the stop at uh, Broadway. Um, and again, I never like to see all these review comments, but it's an important building for this, so let's do it anyway. That all the review comments uh, be satisfied uh, before it goes to City Council, and that includes the recommendations. That includes everything on page two and page three. In addition to that, uh, we would appreciate uh, also a consideration of a bike rack uh, at some location. It is, it is, it's, on it's, it's on there. Oh, okay. Right it's oh, good. Sorry. Right All right, thanks. Right thank you. <laughs> uh, I was too busy looking at the old one. Uh, and that um, it would be, we would uh, request that you take another look at. Uh, the south and the west elevation um, <clears throat> to make the tie in a little bit better, uh, hopefully better on the west side. Um, I have one more thing to put on there. And that uh, the colors, uh, all the colors that you're going to use uh, for a final decision be presented to the city council. And it might even help if you just color the if you just color that elevation, that west elevation, so they you, you, you know you're doing it. I second the motion. Jenkins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bowersox? Yes. Sires? Yes. Hill? Yes. Deets? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you the council liaison report? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, just at the last council meeting, we spent a lot of time discussing park ground and the fact that with, we're getting lots of developments in town. They're not all big, so we're getting little chunks of park ground dedication. And we had lots of questions, but very few answers. We're going to look to the Park Commission for some guidance, and hopefully you guys, too, because we're getting all these little parks. They're all coming in fairly quickly. We don't have any money to put equipment in them. Uh, citizens are disappointed, but so that's something we talked about for a long time. And <coughs> as I understand it now, we can take in-kind money instead of ground, if that's legal. And but that money, and correct me here, Gary, if I'm wrong, then that money has to be spent within that development. Is that what I understood? Or close nearby. Or nearby. So uh, we spent a lot of time discussing that <coughs> and what we can do about it. And, uh, what I would, I know we all as a council would appreciate any input. Input. The PNC has. Money, what's that? 
That instead of ground, they, the, they figure the, out, get an appraisal on the ground, and say, okay, we're going to give you this much cash. Oh, okay. But then you have to spend that cash close by mm -hmm. the development. Mm -hmm. For park purposes. For park. For park. For park. For park but there yeah. could, there's seven parks in Oak City, aren't there? Would there be something possibly that would be? Yeah, there's. We're there might getting be more now. We're. Okay. We're trying to guard against getting all these little yeah. parks oh, yes. here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. that, first of all, might not big enough to be big enough to put anything in, and then as we get them all, we can't afford to put anything in there because the cost of playground equipment is just off the charts. <laughs> and parking, yeah, is always an issue. Yeah. and that's something that cons citizens are considered. Tenny Bob get lots of comments from them, and some of the comments I get is, "Why are you putting in another park? You haven't finished the last one," and that sort of thing. So, just to make you guys aware, any input you guys have, we would uh, appreciate. I think that's all I have. Thank you. It is kind of a conundrum the way we do this, whereas. It seems to me to be more efficient if we had some way, and I don't know how you do it, <coughs> of, of having kind of a park with a radius so that you got, you know what I mean, there's a park here with this mm -hmm. radius and then there's That's so actually in your cop plan. Mm -hmm. That's in your cop plan. It is. Radius. Okay. Yeah. Well, so so if, you look if we the have that, then it now. seemed like we could meet the nearby issue by saying, okay, you're near this one, so it's going to work. Yeah. And, that, and that's something else we talked about. Instead of just taking whatever the developer wants to give us, which is usually something that he can't put a house on. Let's be a little bit sturdier on where we want our park ground. And, and, and in some cases, in many cases, I would say you really have to cash and you know, improve this. Well, and particularly if you get a park that's more of a, a ditch, you know, yeah. and everything. And that's why we were talking about earlier with the saying usable park ground. Too. Usable and a minimum, minimum size. Yeah. Yeah. And, and street frontage, because honestly, if you have a lot of parks that you can't oh, yeah. get to, I mean, it, it, yeah. nobody knows they're there, yeah. and, and they're hard to maintain. And I don't know, Kristen knows this, and I know this, that there was, we got park ground in the past that people raised money for, oh. put, uh, put equipment in it, and it had a narrow path between private homes, People weren't comfortable with their kids going back there, never got used. Moral of the story is we let the adjacent landowners have it back just for filing fees, and that park doesn't exist anymore. Is that by the nursing home? Pardon? Is that by yes. the nursing home? Yeah. yeah, it had a neat name, though. It was Peanut Gallery yeah, Park. Certainly. I always thought that was kind of a neat name. <laughs> I, think, I think we went so back far as to have a contest naming for somebody to name that. I'm sure we gave away a car or something. <laughs> but just, those just don't work. In past practice, anywhere we've had them that didn't work. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing at this time. I have a question. Speaking of parks, how is, is it on schedule for the one across the street? Yeah, that. Supposed to be done by the end of September. Um, we'll probably be moving dirt back in around the concrete. They were doing that today. As I was at Rice yeah. so uh, I need to look out my window more often. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, That's a plug. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I think it, it will meet the end of September. Everything is falling into place uh -huh. very well. Um, Weather won't affect us too much now, so it'll dry. Mm -hmm. to, That'll be good to have. Does anybody know? Do they put the equipment in next, or do they put the matting in next? Matting and then equipment. And then equipment. Good. People quit asking me. You want to put playground equipment on concrete? <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> One thing I might add under staff report, I, I should have said this, um, we learned about a week ago that Pine Ridge Drive is now going to be closed as part of Highway 415 
once East Southside Drive is paved and able to be open. So um, where there was only supposed to be one street closed, now the DOT is deciding to have to close East Pine Ridge Drive for a while. Uh, this this project continues to evolve and has a mind of its own entirely. It's like having a 17-year-old girl at home that wants to ask for her dad's car all the time. <laughs> it's a design build. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, could have been a boy, too. I don't know. <laughs> That's so far in my history, I can't even remember what it was like. <laughs> uh, Commissioner, anyone? Commissioner motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second.